Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your... I'm really humbled and honored to be over here. But of course, what he said is so right, inequality, in our biggest democracy in which even I'm now a citizen of this country because the Election Commission has given me the right of voting out of the boxes of male and female, putting the box of others. And last evening, as it is, half of you must be knowing what happened. And the best example of inequality, stigma, discrimination, and where me and my community still is there in a city like Mumbai. We are at the horizon and the fringes of the mainstream society. It is sad. It is really sad. But for me, it doesn't matter because I have become like a duck. You pour the water on me, it just goes away. Nothing sticks to me. But it's sad. I should, and it is, it is necessary for you all to know, how did I come till here? Traveled around the globe. I never ever thought also after going into, after accepting my sexuality as what I am and I, what I want to be, I could do and achieve so much was out of question in my mind. So I should take you right back in my childhood to my youth, and still I'm very young, <laughs> yes. So, I, I still remember, I don't know when I remember that what was my sexuality, but I, always I was different. Always. Of course, what we say, sissy, girlish, shy. I used to walk on the street was like that when I used to go to my tuitions. This way, or straight like that, you know. Nothing could bother me. People used to talk straight. I could, boys, calling, you know, good, chaka, mamu, all the possible slang to me. And I used to walk straight. I used to behave as if I'm dumb and deaf. And of course, of course, I had that guts to walk up head straight and not even bother about what others are saying. But everybody's not so lucky and confident in their life. So I could manage to complete my studies and talk in the language which you all understand learn the so-called manners of the so-called mainstream society, the hypocritical society, which I always say, which always have a beautiful plethora of canvas posted in front of themselves to show what they want to show. But I never wanted to be that. I don't want to be a hypocrite in my life. I wanted to be what I am. Of course, I term this thing as very hydrotic, you know. I never knew what the dictionary, none of the Webster or Oxford never gave me the, even there is no word of hijra over there, but I came to know about the hijra community. But prior to knowing that, what did I know first? So in school, everybody used to tease me, third, fourth standard. So I, and I was very good at dancing, drama. I still remember in junior KG, I did this one skit, uh, the capsular and the monkey. And I, I was sta standing at the corner and my lungi came off. And I was like, man, auntie or miss? And miss comes running and ties my lungi up. And then I complete the whole drama. She's quite proud of me. But always I was, you know, something is wrong. So people used to tease me and people used to call me homo. I didn't know what is this word homo meant. So all thing what I started, oh my God, this opens. Okay, I thought I could sit on it. I shouldn't try that? Okay, forget it. Oh, Ajay is so handsome in the blue shirt. Yeah. So, uh, it was for me or Ajay. That's bad. <laughs> okay, so what happened? Everybody used to call me homosexual. Very curious. Kept on reading wherever the word homo came. So the only homosexual available in this country was Ashok Rao Kavi. Okay, ah, of course, he had, was out, so only homosexual anybody knew in India or in Asia was Ashok Rao Kavi. So that time I told my friend to take me to the Maheshwari Garden, the Mecca and Medina of the gay people of that time. And still it is, every Sunday the whole community comes and meets, it's a meeting place. So I landed up there and I said, Mama, something is really wrong with me. People say I'm abnormal. And Ashok is like the godmother. So I even for me, she was mama. They said, mama, something is wrong with me. People call me abnormal. And I, abnormal, and I don't know why. I like men crotch. She was like, B 
baby, you're normal. The world around you is abnormal. What you're doing? I'm studying. What do you? What is your hobbies? I like dancing. You should study. I will always keep a check on your mark list and all that. I was quite impressed, you know. This person is so bold about sexuality. So the next thing in the evening, next day, it's like I'm gay. The new word, what I learned. So fifth standard child telling I'm gay was a big thing. And in Thani city and Mulun Bandhu, people, if anybody knew who was gay or homo, was Lakshmi and one Mohan. Mohan died later on, but it was Lakshmi became a tag name for whoever we effem effeminate in my whole Thani place. So see this, it's irony, you know, why people are different, so they always, people intend. But uh, when you're sexually different, it's much more. I was not very comfortable with the gay status because wherever you, there used to be, you know, gays used to meet at one place, wherever I used to go, they all used to vanish. Because they said, why can't you be normal? In that section also, I was quite abnormal then. So it was sad. I told, what is the problem with me? You know, like, I, I used to go to meet them. But then, of course, there were men who liked men. But I was like, I was camp cola bottle, you know, just shake it and open and soak it goes. Of course, he said it right. And from childhood, I was like that. Then there were drag queen contests. So, of course, the queen had to win the contest. Three years dominating, played all my politics with the crown on my head. Nobody else should have it. So then I become the drag queen. Okay, meanwhile, then I was learning dancing and everything. I started my own academy with Dhyanrita Niketan on my mother's name. I had a lot of oppo oppositions in my family because I come from an orthodox Hindu family from Eastern UP, Gorakhpur. I'm Tripathi, so in our so-called community, boys shouldn't learn dancing. And on top of that, see, so half of the blame was given to my dance for my sexuality. Classical dance has made him like that only. You know, because all the, it is an assumption what has been done. Of course, but I used that curtain very beautifully. I used to always become Mohini, Lakshmi. So all the dance dramas I used to do in a female attire and which went off very well. I entered model coordination, acted in television films. But till I didn't do that, it was always a big stigma behind me. People used to accept my art, but not me. People would always say that she's a he, she, they didn't know. A good answer, it is a good answer. But the problem, you know, there is something. But because of my art, I had good amount of students and everything. But things changed once I came on the silver screen. I remember Egg Zone, then I did one, uh, the first Launi remix I did in, with Vaishali Salman. So things suddenly change. The perspective of people changed. They were not looking to my sexuality. In that time, I met Shabina, who told me, and I used to hate hijras. Hijras were not my place. I used to always say to other hijras, why you clap? Why you lift up your sari? What is this? You could do something else in life. This is not to be done. It's such a how. To me, to me, sabke nanga hone me sharam nahi aati hai. To jo chal re, gandu, you speak like that only. Horrible. To kya hai? Kuch samajh me nahi aata hai. For the hijras also had the big question, who am I? So now, one, I remember 31st, we all were going to Vajeshwari, that is the hot spring place in Thane district. We were going for this place and then Shabina told me, a friend who was working as an assistant for me, with me for this place uh, when I was doing model coordination, Shabina happens to tell me about the Guru Chela Panampara, what is in the Hijra community and she was a Hijra. Her sister was my model and her sister told me, my brother is like you and would you like to give a job, you are searching for an assistant. I told if the person is like me, I am quite comfortable, please send him. So I see Shabina. And for the first time, I met her at CST. I was sending models to Hyderabad, the Ramoji Film City. After that, I catch Shabina's hand and take her straight to Cafe Montigar. And she didn't want it to come there. I told, why? Why you didn't want to come here? She told, no, log they can give, what they will say, what will be their reaction. I told, shut up, I'm paying, we are paying for it. Nobody is doing a favor. We are, a, we are paying and we have money. We can walk in anywhere. We are in India. So I took her. But I could see on her face that uncomfortableness and people around also, but for me it, it didn't matter. 
you can be uncomfortable. Then, yeah, <laughs> yes. Well, always I don't make people uncomfortable. Don't worry, girls. You are at safe ends. Okay. So, um, then Shabina was the one who told me about the Hijra culture. What is Hijra? Hijra is, we are neither man nor woman. Because according to us, Prakriti is Nari, what is written in Bhagavad Gita. Prakriti is Nari, only there is one Purush, that is Mahavishnu, Narayan. And what is said, only three Purush were there, Ashwa, Arjun, and Ashwa is horse, Arjuna, and Krishna. So the whole Prakriti is Nari, even the men who are sitting in this room, are how much men is a question mark. No, which is a fact, we condition a child to be a man and to be a woman. Children who don't want to be in those boxes are considered to be abnormal. But of course, it was religious. So one day, fine, I get up and I decide I should be in a culture which is mine. And I was the first hijra in the Mumbai hijratic culture, which went all alone to get initiated in the community. So I met and met. We have the heads of the community. Our community is hierarchical. It's complete pyramid. We have one head that is known as the Nayak. In Mumbai, we have seven families. And the seven families has seven heads. So when the head says, you know, this is not evening, this is early morning, immaterial to my knowledge and my education, I have to accept it that it's morning, not evening. So that powerful they are till the date. So, of course, it was a very orthodox. And once you know Hijra, so for, for you all, it's myths, misconcepts, mystery. How is their life? We don't know anything. Am I right? Uh, yeah. Were you all nodding? Boring? No, okay, that's good. Okay, so it's all about mystery, you know, that who are there. And for me, it was like that. I went in and asked Lata Nayak, who is the Nayak of my family, I want an admission. What is your admission fees? How much donation you will take? Uh, because that was only what I had learned, you know. And they said, she, and she, she knows a little bit of English and stuff. And then she was such a feminine. She was the only feminine hijra sitting in a corner. A typical woman, beautiful. She could put any woman to a shame. But around her, all the hijras were like, you know, if Raman and Sagar have, would have met them, we need not needed any asuras to give makeup, you know. Seven foot with this jatta, with the nose. Yay, corn reto. And I was like, that time pager and mobile were very recently. So I had this pager and mobile in my hand. And I said, like, I was shit scared. I was, I said, oh my God, where the hell I am? So this very feminine lady comes up to the, what happened, Beta? Kya hua bacha? Then she takes me inside, says, and I, I want to admission. Who is your guru? Then I told Shabina. Though, of course, she knew Shabina. I became a chela. I was thrilled. I was really thrilled the day I became chela. But I continued my life into dancing. And I always wanted to be a courtesan. So from that day, I was a hijra, initiated into the hijra culture. And during that period, I always you know, had this desire, if I'm a woman, then I'm India's biggest tawaif. You know, I do it every night at night, and I come to the king of the This is my dream. So I landed up dancing in a dance bar. Four years, 11 months, one of the topmost dancers of the central line, I was. I could see how you could play with the men, which we always, feminist women say, patriarchal society. It was fun, you know, like how these men leave their wife, everything. And I used to stand, kya kar rahe hai, kyu hai, paise uda, itna, chalis hazar, pachas hazar. And they used to do it. I was like, how dumb, you know, <laughs> and, and that was the fun. So, and till the today, till the date, all the Annas really love and respect me because I was always, they used to have a percentage, 35 percentage of my car, uh, all tips, highest ones, you know. I could put any girl to shame and that was my plus point, my dance and everything. And it was fun dancing right from evening till morning, you know, seven o'clock. And on all my songs, Salami Ishq and all, 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 sub, 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 kari, mene. So it was fun for me. At that time, Ghagra Vagra also had come into existence. By that time, Shabina Priya, a well-educated 
to Hijra, Shabina, my guru. Now she is doing her PhD in Tata's, uh, Tata Institute of Social Sciences. So she has still, she's, she would be one of the first Hijras who will get her doctorate. That is Shabina. Shabina always wanted to have her organization and talk about rights. So she comes to me one evening and she said, Lakshmi, she always treated me like a friend, not like a Guru Chela. So we should start an organization. I told, well and fine. That organization, I funded for it because I never, I told, I can't wear those cotton saris, cotton kurtas with one that dirty dupatta white color with that, you know, and walk into streets. I don't want to be that social worker. That is not me, you know. I need my makeup. God. Okay. They only have 15 minutes for me. They're bad. Okay. So, then what? I told, okay, you need money. I give 20,000 rupees. And then I said, okay, we'll form. I'll be one of the members. So, we established Asia, Southeast Asia's first transgender organization, which was Thai Welfare Society. Shabina, due to some reasons, left Mumbai. Organization was put to one hold. So, the Shabina's guru, who was my grand guru, we have such kind of relation. My guru is my guru. Her guru is my grand guru. My chela will call my guru Nani. And my chela's chela will call me Nani. So, this is a complete family structure. We are not supposed to back answer our guru. Guru, what he says is right. Gurus can be horrible. They really exploit within the community, not sexually financially and everything. There is no lesbianism within the community. So it's a, out of the question. I'm so sorry. Oh, hiccups. Okay. <laughs> then, 2006, I left Thai Welfare Society. But, forming an organization, right from being president to the pun, being from the community, I got up when I became the president of Thai Welfare Society after a year in 2000. I started telling that you should give to the government, that you should give projects to the community, give the ownership to the community, and the community will show that they can work. In that way, we broke the first myth that hijras cannot work in an office setup. It became a complete different revolution. Because we had the product uh, project, we had the finances, we took education, we were trained. Because some point or the other, people leave their education because of stigma, discrimination, what they face into day-to-day -day life. So they don't continue their education. So this thing all happened with us. We got through Thy Welfare Society running. Due to my personal problems and the hierarchical society, I resigned from Thy in 2006 and started Astitva. Astitva, oh God, three minutes. So Astitva, can, can I take five minutes or three minutes? I speak in two minutes of AV. Okay, thank you. Okay, he said yes. So, Astitva came to an existence when UN General Assembly President's office wrote to me that I had to be a part of the Civil Society Task Force. For me, I said, oh my God, I don't want to be there. I don't want to stand outside the U.S. consulate for, two, you know, two, three hours. So, suddenly they gave me G4 visa. I didn't know what was G4 UNDP office. I thought it is a gay visa something for U.S., you know. Yeah. So, I, I know I'm, oh, this will be on US, this also, yes. Oh, hi, but I love you all. I know what is G4 visa. Okay. So, you know what happened? I, I still remember that I didn't know anything. I landed up New York airport. I feel my lipstick is a little light. So, I remove my lipstick. My passport is there. I'm in the queue, standing and putting up my lipstick with golden shoes, golden bag, something, you know, push-up bras I was wearing with a slip and something weird I was wearing. And this lady comes up, can I see your passport? I told, now they're deporting me. You know, this was the first thing what came to my mind. And then they saw G4 visa, madam come. So it was diplomatic slash G4. I told, oh my God, gays have such special rights in this country. <laughs> so I walked through. I sailed through the whole immigration. The next day when I went to the uh, task force, and they all were telling their experience, then they said, how did you, what, I, don't, I, said, I got some gay visa, some G4 visa. The Lakshmi, shut up, that is diplomatic status visa. I said, wow, I'm diplomatic over here, you know. In my country, people treat me like shit. And, you know, over here I have the diplomatic status. But that was one of the pride movements in my life. When I, when I went in UN building 
and touched my country's flag, which was just outside the General Assembly. That was one of the moments which I'll never forget in my life, that immaterial to my sexuality, my identity, I could reach till here. This kept on giving so much of you know inspirations in my life, which I have done so much things. But it's not, I'm, not, I'm lucky, but not my community. There is so much still yet to be done. The right of education has come in India, but I don't know how much it will be for us and how many institutions won't deny us being there. That is one pondering things. There is so many things. There is no social setup in the so-called mainstream society where the person of the Hijra community who is really, when your parents disown you, your siblings disown you, your friends disown you, is there any system where the mainstream society always blames, they beg, they are into sex work. But none of you will even keep a bai in your house who is a hijra or a cook. You may spend it like that, but you won't do that. Put it to yourself and one question mark, what did you do for the community which has existed throughout so many centuries until the date? British has brought section 377 for us, which the prior registered cases always speaks about. We were considered traitors that time because British, we never supported the Britishers. 500 Hijras died in fighting for Bahadur Shah Zafar when he was taken in uh, protecting the harem of the queens. History speaks about us. Religious books speaks about us. Right from Manu Smriti, we were known as Qiblas, Kinnar, Sakhiya in Hindu culture. In Islam, we were known as Mukhanas, Muazar Muanas Mukhanas, the third sex. In spite of all the support of religious support, people knowing we existed for so many years, but still in this country, we are at the horizon and living at the fringes of the society. I could speak for another three, four hours, but still things would be so much incomplete. So I would like to show this AV. And in short, I tried to put something which would at least put you all to see what is my community.